What's going on, everyone? Brian here for Ginger Prime. Uh, hello, if you're new, and uh, hello, hello, if you're returning. So, uh, you guys in the comments, in the live streams, and so much have asked me to kind of dive into the latest Josh Drive Haze videos, especially as it relates to New World being broken. And so I sat down, watched this, really actually enjoyed the videos. Josh makes excellent, excellent videos. Been a fan of his for a long time now, and just consumed it like. And that's how I was, uh, <laughs> that's how it was, but y'all keep asking. And so what I ended up doing this morning, sat down, rewatched it, uh, took some notes and actually I've got them kind of slightly behind my camera over here. So, uh, permit me to look slightly off screen just to make sure I kind of hit the bullet points. Uh, give you guys my thoughts about his teardown, uh, his, the questions that he asks, especially as he brings up the concept of client side authoritative, uh, programming is this, and he asks essentially the question, is this just a hiccup for the game or is this a big developer mistake? So let's go and break it in. I think the first and foremost, uh, you know, thing that we have to highlight, especially when we are discussing video games online is that Josh says, if you're having fun, that's great. He's happy for you. I think that's the key aspect. I think there's a fun uh, piece to be had in discussions and breaking down both the positive and the negative. I like that kind of content. It's one reason why I like Josh uh, and his videos, but I know that there is, you know, a, a percentage of people who, um, one way or the other, like if you're not hundred percent positive or hundred percent negative, uh, they, they either don't want to hear it, or they're just going to try to come in and either blindly defend or blindly dunk. I'm not necessarily all about that, but I will be taking more of a defense of new world. Um, and as I'm obviously very much enjoying the game, like I am absolutely in love with the game. It's, I think it's incredible. Now, does it have flaws? Yes. And that's actually kind of a real key aspect to hopefully answer Josh's question. Uh, is this a hiccup or is this a bug? So, um, yeah, permit me to kind of explore these ideas. First and foremost, we have a couple of uh, key points that he brings in right at the start of the video. The game is hemorrhaging uh, players and the game has gold exploits. So kind of to separate those two, gold exploits is a major issue. I talked about this on the podcast. In fact, I actually reach out to Josh, see if we can't get him on Epic Loot Radio because I think it'll be a fun discussion a topic, but gold exploits, ec economic exploits that can, that can have ripple effects for months, if not longer years. It can, you know, when you're sitting here and making and printing uh, money and, and using the economy with, with gold, uh, that's, that's one thing uh, to be said. Now, when we actually go look at the, the numbers that Amazon has reported, cause they actually, one of the things I keep seeing is people saying they're not communicating. I think they could be communicating better, but they definitely are providing uh, information we've been kind of diving into it here on the channel but they talk about the gold in versus the gold out of the economy and right now if people you know what people feel doesn't necessarily align with the data that is being shared so we can choose to you know reject the data that's being shared as, as false uh, and then that becomes you know a whole other topic for another day but at its core if we look at the data money's flowing in the economy uh is and i put out a video on this specifically um you had rapid in inflation and, and overvaluation of of items. We see this happening in crypto markets all the time. And then all of a sudden, when that value came down based off of how players play or been trained to play MMOs, uh, then we've seen kind of the market collapse. And now we've kind of seen it uh, level off depending on what server that you're on. So there are definitely markets and things that people are, are purchasing. And we've also seen people revert to a barter system. So gold exploits, real critical issue. It has to be addressed. ASAP. The invulnerability exploit has to be addressed because that's going to ruin other people's fun. If you're running around and you want to like you want to exploit the game, you're in an MMO, you're probably going to get banned. Uh, if they can, you know, find that way to track that and make sure that hey, this is what happened. Okay, boom, we found you. Uh, you were ruining other people's fun. That's a violation in terms of service. See a sayonara. Um, so I would not um, obviously encourage people to go out and try to take advantage of the exploits that have been uh, shown. So there's like people who have a Python script. They kind of talk about in the video, they show how to, to replicate it. And I honestly, at the end of the day, that is something to be concerned about. We're going to put that over in the concern category. Now the concept of hemorrhaging players, I want to kind of dive in on that because um, it's not, and you might go look at steam charts and be like, Oh, it had a peak of 900,000. And now like it's averaging right now for the month, 450,000. And yeah, like you're seeing obviously a downward uh, trend. Uh, hemorrhaging players, if you want to go with that definition, was always going to happen. Like, there is nothing that is happening now that was not going to happen. Um, gamers come in for hype. Uh, gamers go and play and they grind to 60 and they go and play other games. 
The question that we don't yet know is that um, is the game being uh, bringing in new players or the players who are playing it happy? And generally overall, uh, for the most part, like I've seen a handful of people who are like, I I either didn't play the game and I'm not going to, or I played it really wasn't my cup of tea, but that seems to be the minority. Even Josh in his own video talks about the game is fun. Like, and, and creating a fun game is, is the hardest part. Like you can go and we'll, we'll get to the exploits here in a second, but creating a fun game is actually um, the thing that Amazon really did right. And so what I mean by that, and I've said it here before, I'm going to keep repeating it um, because I think it's important. Uh, it's not about how the game launches. Like I think actually Amazon's had an incredible launch, uh, all things considered. The fact that you can get on the servers and for the most part, like they're up. Uh, we had a maintenance last night and they're doing bug fixes. It looks like at least once a week, uh, you know, okay. You know, could they do, do better? That's, you know, we can get into the nitty gritty nuances and you can let me know uh, in discord or in the comments, but um, the fun game aspect is the most critical thing. The second most critical thing is when are content updates? People keep talking about roadmaps, uh, wanting to see them. And my, my, my take on it is that until you can get your house in order and, you know you can deliver, don't promise a roadmap. We've seen roadmaps being promised by other game devs and those can completely get thrown out of the window and it hurts uh, consumer trust. Uh, it's about communicating, about being very clear, open and, and as transparent as you can be because um, game development and game playing, uh, like while they're in the same, you know, I guess sphere of thought, they're so completely different. And so some things that impact you as a developer um, you know, might not necessarily translate like the way that it is actually intended um, to the consumer, to the player. And this is me speaking as a developer and a player. I've worked and led teams where essentially there were developers on that team that were flagged as never commute. Let this person ever talk ever um, because they'll tell you what's happening. And that's what I needed to know. But somebody would hear them speak and they would interpret it the other opposite way for whatever reason. And so there's certain classifications of people uh, within development that are what we call frontline uh, front room IT. And then we have back room IT and it's like, and then you have somebody who translates between uh, the two and that ended up being part of my job uh, when I went from, you know, being the the head engineer, the head architect, and then being the vice president of that uh, department um, management, not <laughs> it's overrated. It sucks, but it is what it is. It helped, uh, helped uh, feed the family. So that was important. Anyway, that whole aside, uh, aside, the aspect that uh, the developers need to communicate. It's all about, and I'm gonna say this really, really clear, the content. Content is king, it will always be king. And anybody kind of going off on this, um, this aspect of, uh, of even the content cycle, uh, it's all predictable. Like you, if I put out like, you know, here's the, here's the title of the videos that will roll out, you know, you know of, the, <laughs> of this game, no matter what, come, you know, October, November, December, like that, that's always going to happen. That's what happens, especially with online persistent games. People like to treat them in, you know, thought in terms of like that they're a single player game set in stone and there's no such thing as, you know, updates. So updates and content are absolutely game. A uh, new world's going to be more defined by uh, how it establishes itself from a content rollout and its expansion cycle uh, than anything else. That is going to be where uh, the game thrives so whether the the trend line is going down or going up that's all going to be a part of the news cycle and what people are actively playing and here's the real critical thing people are talking about it so if you're upset that somebody's saying something critical about new world honestly you should go thank them because the biggest cost the biggest fear the biggest risk is nobody talks about the game nobody talking about the game whether it's positive or negative is the death nail it is the the be all end all if no one is talking about the game that's when you know there's a problem. And the fact is, is that, um, yeah, that's kind of the, the case. Content is king. Uh, we've seen a couple of updates. We don't know what their next you know, piece of big content update is, but we do know that they had a patch last night. They're looking to address issues. And honestly, as players, like if you're having fun, great. If you're not, go play something else. Like it's a simple, easy um, left or right decision. And yeah, we'll uh, give them, you know, I think that uh, they've definitely earned the, the time and, and, and interest based off the game alone. It's a, it's a good game. It, it is. It's just, it's just fun to play. Now let's dive into the, uh, the issues, the exploits go, like we said, gold vulnerability. Um, they, they pushed out the patch last night that, uh, is, is trying to address this, uh, whether the game is client side authoritative or not. So for anybody who's, who's not aware, 
uh, the client has um, more say in anything. So blocking certain signals would essentially impact the overall game. The server in a multiplayer game should be the most authoritative source because that's going to be what helps, you know, prevent anybody from uh, creating uh, various exploits. Now, uh, they do have the uh, easy cheat, uh, you know, kind of system in place. Maybe that will be uh, something that they can kind of uh, lean on and rely on a little bit more in an action based game, uh, you know, especially like that in Destiny and shooters like there has to be some uh, level of balance um, between all of these different things. Uh, I did not design these games. I did not architect uh, these kind of systems. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm some kind of expert in in the data packets and how these things get communicated, but it is a critical issue and should be addressed as soon as possible. Uh, otherwise, essentially, people are going to start to get frustrated and lose hope because you have you have people who will take advantage and those people will grief the players who are having fun and it will ruin the fun. And essentially, then, the you know, it, it will be unfortunate that a handful of people who are exploiting, if they aren't brought to, you know, some kind of justice or having uh, kind of that uh, taken away, uh, they could ruin they could ruin the overall reputation of the game. You don't want to establish yourself as someone who's just like, it's a free for all. And you kind of you spend your 40 bucks and maybe you get on a good server. Um, you know, so that's going to be a, a key issue, but these aren't, and you know, these aren't easy, you know, fixes. Like one of the things that especially frustrates me, cause I've been in that, uh, in that area where somebody runs in and it's like, Hey, can you, uh, can you make this into a, an HL seven, uh, interface and have it communicate, uh, securely with these, you know, X, Y, and Z's. And it's like, yeah, okay. Like we need this much time. We we've got all this other product and project load. So I can, we can start this in, uh, in uh, February. Oh, no, no, no. We needed you to start it yesterday and it needs to be done by next week. And I go, that's just, are you, are you, are you going to come code with us? Cause we don't have the resources to do so. Are we going to, you know, or are you going to go call all the people we made promises to? Um, so I personally, like, I think, and maybe if wrongfully, so you guys can let me know, I tend to give a lot more patience to the developers. I tend to like, if you get, and if that, if you're like, no, Brian, you're, you're pretty hard on people. It's like, I tend to be more hard on the publisher on the, on the money on those who are setting the expectations um, than I am the actual people who are actually working on on the game. And for the most part, I have to say, like, again, I couldn't be happier. So like Josh said, he says, it's fun. It's it's fun to be around the lighting, the sound, the music. Uh, he's happy that people are enjoying the games, um, but he fears a collapse of the game. The only way New World doesn't continue to grow, the only way that New World, I, I guess, doesn't uh, isn't considered a success is if Amazon gives up on it. If Amazon stops communicating, stops listening, and stops updating the game, then there's a real problem. But those three things have to occur. And my hope is, because the thing is, is that you and I, nobody knows. Not me, not Josh, not, you know, internet comment, you know, individual number, you know, 362. Don't know why I filled that number out. Anyway, um, we don't know because we don't know Amazon. Because they're new. They don't have a, they, their history is a history of, well, that game sucked and cancel it. They actually have a game that's good. And if they're able to, and if hopefully they, they continue to invest in it, you know, and they continue to, to, to fix the, the bugs and the errors. And it isn't a matter that people are going to go play and go play something else. It's a matter of like, do they come back? Do they come back for the next update or the next expansion or what have you? And overall, like populations ebb and flow and the population itself kicking off with a high of just right under a million is quite substantial. So you've got that many as your current potential ceiling Can they grow that ceiling. And how do they grow that ceiling? And they grow it with content. So, yeah, rooting for them to fix uh, the bugs from the patch notes and more. They're looking, you know, they're working on it. Will it be a quick fix? I don't necessarily think so. The gold exploit absolutely has to be fixed. Some of these things have to be fixed and it's unfortunate, but is it like, I'm, I don't know. I'd rather be playing the game right now. I'm just going to give them, I'm going to give them that grace. So that's, that's kind of my, my thoughts. Um, overall, like again, uh, you know, Josh asked the question, uh, is this a hiccup or is this major uh, defect? I think it's a hiccup. I think this is just a small road bump in the history of it. And I hope that I'm right. You know, obviously, you know, we'll find out history will be the true teacher in this moment, but I'm more than willing and more excited than ever. It speaks to me that Amazon, a company with all of its data is investing in an MMORPG. It speaks to me that they're investing also in Lost Ark, another MMORPG. And I think that they see something in here and 
New World is a foundational game. It sets a base level and it's got plans, obviously, for the future. We've seen those plans already with new zones and new weapons and more. Okay, those are excellent opportunities to invite players back. But what else can it be? And if it's essentially a sandbox theme park, a sand park, if you will, uh, that allows for you know content creation and the continual updates and conversation around the game, then it's going to do just fine. Again, as long as the devs keep listening, keep communicating, and content is king. So that's my thoughts. Thank you guys for listening. Again, go check out Josh's video. I think it's incredibly well done. Thank you, Josh, for making it. Thanks for taking the time and covering and talking about New World. Um, yeah, we're going to see what happens from here. That's the video. Thanks. For everything guys you're the best uh hopefully uh, you guys let me know what you're thinking about this hopefully you enjoy the video but i got other things i gotta get to right now i uh, appreciate it um a couple other things like last note um people are asking me to kind of do one of these video styles of uh the jesse cox video we had him on the podcast just last week so if you guys haven't seen the podcast check out the podcast channel ginger gaming radio or look for crystal core radio or epic glue radio wherever you get your podcasts and you're going to be rocking and rolling. Give me a five-star rating if you enjoy the shows. Um, but other than that, love you guys. Love your faces. Hopefully, I'll see you in my next video. But until then, take care.